Doctor Sleep is an odd beast of a film. It serves as a quasi-sequel to both the book and the film The Shining, which is utterly bizarre considering just how different the two are in terms of themes and narrative. I'm no fan of the director, despite respecting his haunting series for its immense commitment to tone and the director's vision, despite how uncommercial it might have seemed to be. Flanagan's work consists of cold, stained digital frames saturated in teal color grading that seem devoid of life and substance, but surprisingly contain more visual information and cues than most modern horror films. His shots really have this cold detachment from his characters, as if he wants his viewers to feel like specters moving through his movies and shows. His work is devoid of the typical crutches of horror films and are far slower paced. Luckily, he has found success with Netflix. Despite not being a huge fan of his, I did find myself greatly enjoying Dr. Sleep. From the beginning, we see the film readopt the theme of alcoholism that the Kubrick masterpiece pushed to the sidelines, which is undoubtedly why Stephen King was so irritated with that adaptation. The Shining was a very personal work for him that communicated his addiction and his fear that he'll become a drunken monster that'll harm his family. Danny has fallen to the same demons that his father succumbed to. He's taken up the bottle as a means to cope with his past trauma and current existence, as well as using the drink to drown out his shining ability, no doubt drawing a parallel to how some use alcohol to suppress negative events in their past. After contributing to the death of a child and its mother, he decides he needs to clean up his act and quit drinking. Of course, with this comes the flood of his shining, which puts him on a collision course with a group of nomadic shining users, who feed on steam they extract from child shining users to extend their own lives perhaps drawing a parallel to how some addicts can become a drain on their families and support system if they are not actively trying to accept the help offered to them. But that's a bit of a stretch on my part. This all culminates with a final showdown at the Overlook Hotel, and it's here where Danny comes face to face with his and his father's past demons of addiction. But now he's equipped with the knowledge of said demons, represented by the phantoms that haunt the Overlook. And because of this, he wins his battle. And while he dies, this is more of a spiritual rebirth for him, as unlike his father, he's not chained to the Overlook, and he's beaten his metaphorical and literal demons. Something we see with this scene in which he firmly comes to grips with his addiction, past trauma, and his path forward. Medicine. Medicine is what it is. So tell me, Bum. Are you gonna take your medicine? I'm not. The final moment of the film sees the child Danny has been protecting, unafraid of the phantoms linked to her, and ready to calmly lock them up when necessary. Rather than just baiting a sequel, it seems this serves as a reminder that the kid will most likely be fine due to her new mentor. The whole Overlook set piece has been a major point of criticism for the film, and I understand why, as it harkens to the 2000s onward trend of dredging up nostalgic images of far greater works in hopes of giving a serotonin boost to the audience to achieve a quick pop. However, while a bit overdone, Bringing back these images serve a purpose as they represent the trauma of the protagonist, and by extension his father's, which minorly commentates on the hereditary nature of alcoholism. It also stitches the two films and books together. It reinstates the original book's ending, while not ignoring the first adaptation of it, all while adapting the second book. The film in general isn't for everyone, and when standing next to its predecessor, it looks atrocious, however, like 2010, the year we make contact. It's a perfectly fine standalone piece. It even has some outstanding performances and set pieces. It's an interesting further exploration of a world and character, as well as being one of the few films that truly captured the spirit of a Stephen King novel, eccentricities and all. Do you agree with my explanation of Dr. Sleep? Comment down below if you do or don't.